In this video, I'd like to look at a way in Excel to get the p-values associated with the fit parameters of linear regression, so the slope and intercept, um, without using the data analysis added, which is the, the sort of the normal way for me that I would do it. Okay, so here's just some data. I have alkali, uh, the alkalis in chemistry, and I have their atomic number and their atomic radius. Here is a uh, plot and fit of that data, a linear trend line with the equation display. And then what I normally do to get a p-value is I have the data analysis added. So if I uh, go to data, here's data analysis, but that's not normally there in Excel unless I do this add-in. So under file, uh, under options, then under options, add-ins, I'm adding this sort of analysis tool back. I've already done that. And then in the analysis tool pack, so under, again, where was that? That was under data, data analysis. I say that I want a regression and I want the Ys and the Xs, but I've already done that in here. So here it is. And so here it is over here. And one of the statistical measures that you get from out of the data analysis add-in are these so-called p-values. So the idea roughly of a p-value is that you have some hypothesis and then you have the opposite hypothesis, the so-called null hypothesis, and then the p-value is, in some sense, uh, the the to, should you accept the null hypothesis, and only when the p-value is quite small, one of the standards is 0.05, then should you accept the opposite of the null hypothesis and, and whatever it is, your hypothesis. And our hypothesis here, if we're fitting it to a, a linear equation, a linear equation is defined by the intercept and the slope. So they are each in their way. Um, we're proposing that uh, there should be a constant. And the null hypothesis is that there's no constant, or the constant is zero. And the same thing for the slope. We're proposing that the slope, that there is a slope, and then the null hypothesis is that there's no slope or zero slope. And these turned out to both be uh, small and suggesting that, uh, you know, the, we can reject the null hypothesis and then it sort of is sensible for there to be a intercept and a slope. Now, it doesn't tell you that the data, uh, you know, might be better fit by some other mathematical form than a line or anything like that. It just says that if you're going to have a line, it's it's reasonable to, if you're going to su suppose it's a line, then it's reasonable to, ha to have an intercept, to have a slope. Okay, so that is the p-values. And so the p-value, I again, I normally get it from using this add-in. Um, and I want to show uh, a way in Excel to um, get it without the add-in. Um, and one of the motivations for that is uh, for people who use Office 365, then these add-ins are a little, so I'm going to do it all but over here in sort of my desktop Excel. But here's all that I'm doing other than the result of the add-in, but I'm going to duplicate what I got from the add-in in terms of the p-values um, without using the add-in. And I can... I'm showing you it over here in 365 to say, like, yes, I can. I have a method in 365 to get a p-value. Okay, so uh, I have two sort of references here. One is a YouTube video on um, working with the student t distribution. Um, that's how we're ultimately going to uh, uh, get our p-value is from the, the student T distribution. 
And then I have this uh, other link from uh, Penn State. And that tells me in linear regression um, how I get the P value. And, the P, and it will come from the student uh, T. So that's why the other reference. Um, so here they're telling us that there are these two hypotheses, the hypothesis of an intercept, the hypothesis of a slope, and then the this value, they're calling it the T value, the, the value that you put into the student T distribution from which you get the P value um, is obtained by uh, the intercept divided by the standard error of the intercept. That is this value, and then that value gets put into the student T distribution, and you derive from that the P value. And I'm not in this video doing any explanation of like why that makes sense or you know why the student T or anything like that. I'm just sort of it's just all getting it out of getting the P value from Excel. End of story. Okay, and another thing down here is this uh, degrees of freedom when you subtract two, but actually that's sort of built into the, the sort of method I'm going to use in Excel in a minute. Okay, so those are my references. Okay, now what I'm uh, doing here is using LaSalle, Excel's function uh, line, line S or line ST and um, it is uh, L-I-N-E-S-T, and then you have the Ys and then the Xs. So this, the C column, those were my Ys, the Bs were my Xs. And I say uh, the third uh, argument here is true to say that I want a constant. And the uh, fourth argument here is another true to saying I want various statistical measures from this regression, from this fit, from this trend line. Okay, so here is, this is then an array formula in uh, Excel. Um, and so it gave me sort of five rows and two columns of things. And now we see that the first row is the uh, slope and intercept. So we see them in the graph. So that's duplicating that. And then this uh, second row, if you include the statistics, is the standard error. And that, according to the Penn State reference, is something that we are going to use toward getting to the p-values. So for here, I'm just doing what uh, they that reference said. And I'm dividing the j6 by j7 i'm dividing here the the intercept by the standard error um and the same thing for the intercept and for the slope so that's over here k6 over k7 and so that gets me uh this this value that i'm looking up the T value that I'm looking going to then look up in the student T distribution. And then um, there are sort of left tail T distributions and right tail T distributions. Um, and 2T here is the two tail. And again, the, the reference uh, told me that I wanted a two tail. So I'm working with here to get my p-value is t for the t student t distribution dist for distribution dot two t the two tail version i am looking up that t value which i had in j12 and then i need my degrees of freedom which is my sort of number of points minus two and that was another uh of the parameters that uh, jumped out of here in this uh, line nest. Um, that three in this case is my degrees of freedom, my number of points uh, 
minus two. So I'm going to use K9 um, from, from there. And it sort of saves me the counting. I mean, here there are only five, so it's easy to subtract two and get uh, three. But uh, in other situations, uh, you know, there may be more things and uh, let it count for me. Okay. Um, so there is my P value compared over here. Here's my P value. The slope, the P value is 0 0.02077. 0.0277. So I am getting the p-value without the plugin. That was the whole point. And uh, here it is. This was the slope. This was the intercept. And then I'm just saying, what if you didn't want in all this uh, stuff in Excel hanging out in your spreadsheet? What if, if you are willing to put in a really crazy long formula um, you can just sort of get it all in one cell. So this is me. Um, here is line S, true, true, one, one. That is the slope. And then I'm dividing it by two, one, which was the standard error for the slope. And then uh, my second argument for the T distribution, the two tail T, student T distribution, was the degrees of freedom, and that was in uh, index gets me the row and column. And so that value was in row four of line S and column two. So I can do it if I'm willing to put in such a crazy long formula um, without sort of getting all these other things uh, so if if I wanted just to just to go straight into p value, I can do that. All right, I think that's what I wanted to show you. One more reminder is that um, one of the motivations was that this method I put it I did it in sort of desktop Excel so I could compare the two methods and say, show that they were giving me the same. But my motivation is really like what to do if you're in three sixty five, but you want a p-value of a linear regression parameter. And this is at least a technique. Thanks for your attention.